Hi guys, Luke here of Simbox, and today I'm delighted to be joined by the new British super welterweight champion, Ted Cheeseman. How are we doing, Ted? Yeah, I'm good, thanks, mate. You? Yeah, I'm all good, thanks. So yeah, it's, it's kind of strange saying, or do, do we say, I'm the new British champion or the two-time British yeah. champion, which do you prefer? Two-time, probably, two-time. Two time. So yeah, let's go straight back to the fight Saturday night. It was on the big platform of the pay-per-view. Dillian White against Alexander Povetkin, yourself, James Metcalf. It promised a lot. It was billed as a 50-50 a fight and one that was going to deliver huge results. And boy, did it deliver. How did it feel to be part of such a, a great fight? Now you can look back on it. Yeah, um, it's really good. I think um, now, now it mucks me up a bit. I think everyone expects me to be to have a tough and hard fight every fight now. Obviously, it's good to be be part of them. Um, obviously, it's even better when you win them. So, obviously, I just won the award as well um, this week for fight of the year, 1920. So, and I think this fight will be another contender for this year. It's, yeah, um, um, I don't I don't think it's very fair that nobody else is really getting a look in, Ted. It's like you've made that. Yeah. You're almost going to have like a, a Ted Cheeseman fight of the year and then everybody else's fight of the year. You're going to get your own category. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's good, mate. It's good. Um, to be honest, um, it's been a long road back to to this top spot. I feel where I feel like I'm back number one in the, on the domestic scene. It's been a long road. I've improved tons, um, and I just it's, it's just it, it's topped it off this weekend because it wasn't just another win. It was such a it was a great fight. It's a great finish, and uh, my commercial value has gone up massively. My my um, sales value as a, as a fighter uh, to promote has gone up uh, massively so all round I'm in a great position and I'm just looking forward to see what's next yeah it's good to hear so I just wanted to touch on a couple of spots in the fight uh, of course it was full of entertaining uh, moments but just a couple in, in the fourth round uh, you, you seemed to really get to uh, JJ Metcalf you looked like you could have forced a stoppage there and did you feel yourself in the fight that you was one or two punches maybe away from forcing the stoppage or do you feel the corner could have threw the towel in because it was quite one-sided for that round? Yeah, um, at points in that round, I was thinking, bloody hell, surely the ref's got to jump in in a minute. But obviously it never happened. And then that's when I knew to take the foot back off the gas because he weren't ready to go just yet. And then from then I knew he needed a few big rounds as I felt I'd won the first four rounds quite comfortably. Uh, and that he was going to have to try and exert some energy and, and fall some some rap like win some rounds and by doing that he's going to take a lot out of himself especially after I had such a fast start and took a lot out of him hurting him big and and dominating that round massively so I knew as long as I use my experience never got hit too much still keep popping body shots and little counter shots um, and stand in the fight and then I knew the, like, the championship rounds I'd been there and I knew I'll be able to dig deep and come try and force a stoppage, if not have a massive finish. Absolutely. I mean, the one time that you did look in trouble in the fight, and maybe you'd be able to inform us a little bit of how you felt it went, but in that seventh round, he seemed to get to you. Was you, was you hurt at all at any point in that seventh round? You seemed to be more troubled in, at that point than any other point in the fight. Yeah, no, um, I remember um, he hit me with a shot and then, Straight away as he hit me in the shot, he jumped straight on me with a lot, like a barrage of punches. And I think if you watch the fight, you see me, I sort of turn around to my corner because Tony is screaming at me, Ted, move your feet, use your feet. And I said, like, Tony, I'm sweet. Do you get what I mean? Like, and I come back to the corner like, and Tony's like, don't take silly shots. And I said, Tony, like, it didn't hurt me. He's like, no, no, but don't take the chances. Do you know what I mean? You're winning, don't take the chances. And obviously, listen, you're, JJ Metcalf's a really good fighter. He's a 21 0 fighter. A big strong man physically like really strong could bang and he's a massive statement I think on, on Saturday night when I the way I the way I finished the fight because obviously I think but at that point I was still I think on all judges cards seven seven rounds to three up so as long as I didn't get knocked down I would have won do you know what I mean even if he won the next few rounds but I didn't know that at the time obviously you're in there and with the luck I've had and stuff I just thought, um, I've got to make sure I leave it all in this ring tonight. Absolutely. And it was a hellacious finish when it came in the 11th round and it was right at the end of the round as well. Do you feel when that punch landed, you know, some boxers say they know when a punch lands and it's, a, you know, you hit the sweet spot. Did you feel yourself that you'd you'd landed and hit the spot and, you know, it was potentially the end of the fight? 
yeah, just before that, I could like them that last couple of rounds, I could feel him tiring, and even sometimes when he's poking out the jab, he's more pouring it out because he didn't want to. Like what what is is when you ain't, ain't been twelve rounds much, you're always saving something. Do you know what I mean? Well, with me, I've been there loads of times, so there weren't no worry of saving, consuming energy. I knew what energy I had, and I knew what I had to do, and like when to push and when not to push. And I think he was worried about blowing himself up and being left exhausted. And then by that point, I knew in my head, look, I've just got to push now, push. And when he was hitting me with shots, always trying to finish last to sort of keep breaking his heart, if you know what I mean. And then when I landed that shot, I looked at the way he hit the floor. I see him try to lift his head up the first time. And I knew then, like, if he does get up, he's going to be on very shaky legs and the rest got to stop it. Yeah, absolutely. So take us through the feeling when you've seen it waved off and you knew you'd accomplished it, you'd reached the top of the domestic scene again and you'd got your title back. How good did that feel? Yeah, it was a great feeling because obviously, listen, I, I, I always believed in myself that I was going to win. And even when I hurt him in the fourth, I thought, bloody hell, has he lasted this? But I'm, I sort of put in my head then, this is going to be a long and tough night. I, I've got, I'm going to have to like go to the... To the end here, this is going to be an hard fight. He's going to come, but I've got to make sure I'm ready and get myself mentally ready to do it. But obviously, where I've been there before, as I said, I knew I could do it. And when the stoppage came, I thought, bloody, oh, I've made a big statement here because, as it, as I said, as when I was taking them rounds off, like not doing as much stuff, people were probably thinking, bloody, oh, JJ Metcalf's coming into the fight. The way, oh, uh, sorry. The way, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the way his style is and the way how physically he looked, it looked like bloody old Ted's going to start tiring now. Yeah. And JJ's probably going to start powering on. And then, but I showed my strength and my power and, and my maturity, like my maturity coming through, turning into a proper man with the power still showing in the 11th round. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, a special moment for, for the fans as we was watching on TV was your post-fight interview, you know, and you mentioned that you, you're number one now and you know your place in, in the rankings and you're at the very top. Uh, I bet that was very satisfying for yourself that, you know, you was there for, for a little while and then, you know, you lost your position to regain it and now you're kind of calling the shots and you're the man that everybody else is, is aiming for on a domestic scene. Yeah, definitely. Um, Because it's like when you get there, obviously... When I, when, I, when I beat Sydney Byfield, you think you're unstoppable, do you know what I mean, at that time? And you don't realise you've got tons more to learn. It's like, I still have tons more to learn now, but you feel like no one's going to beat you. And as I said, when I pushed for that Garcia fight, I was never ready to fight Garcia then. I weren't, weren't in the right mental space and I hadn't learned enough and um, experienced enough to try and push for that. But I was just rushing. You know what I mean? I weren't letting my manager and stuff doing a job. I fought for something. Sergio Garcia was an unknown quantity at the time. So we didn't really know how good he is. But now I know what, by having that fight, I know what I've got to do to be that level. You know what I mean? I know what I have to do to beat them opponents. I've been there. So the last two years, I've improved bundles. You know what I mean? As an all round fighter, boxing, fighting, defense, um, know when to, to like, put my foot on the gas and take my foot off the gas. So now, it's all about opportunity, you know what I mean? Um, I've had a lot of tough um, fights. I've, I've fought everyone in, in domestic scene near enough, you know what I mean? So, it's about what Tony and Charlie can do for me and obviously get me closer to achieving my goal of becoming a world champion. Absolutely. You know, interestingly, you say there about you, you fought everybody domestically and you challenged for the European title. You know, you still, is it 25 years of age? Um, yeah, 25, yeah. Yeah, you know, I looked at your the, the records of your last seven combined opponents and their records yeah. combined is 131 wins and eight losses. Six of those yeah. losses belong to Sam Eggington. So if you took Sam Eggington yeah. out of the equation, you know, there's only another two losses combined on seven fighters' records. You know, there's yeah. not many people domestically that can say that at the age of 25. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I think as a lot of people were saying, as, I, as, as on uh, social media and stuff, how entertaining the fights was, how much of a sort of like I'm a throwback fighter that I'll just fight anyone, whatever. And I think now, obviously, I look, I've done that. I've earned my stripes. You know what I mean? I've, I've showed how good I am. I've I've come through the bad spells and and got back to where I need to get to. 
And not everyone wins a British title when you turn pro. Like to win a British title was a big thing. And then to to lose, have a bad spell and then come back and win it in um, such an emphatic style again shows, do you know what I mean? How, what what willing I got to to push all the way. And now it's about picking the right fights. And obviously, listen, you don't want too many of them fights like I did have with Metcalf, but sometimes you can't help it. Do you know what I mean? Uh, that's my style of fighting. You can't help it. And as long as it's entertaining and it sells, it's going to make me money and, and, and get me opportunities. So I just got to see what's around the corner now. I'm, I'm enjoying... For once, I think I've said it in a few interviews now, for once, after a fight, I've had 95% positive comments and 5% negative. And normally it's the other way around, whether you win or lose. And, and and it's good to see that because now the public will get behind me. Now um, Sky Matra are going to obviously want to look after me. So it's, I'm in a great position. Yeah, absolutely. I think for the first time, you know, you, you've had your big fights and your big wins and you've took your losses. But I think this, with it being on such a, a high platform with the backstory that you had and to win in the fashion that you did, I think finally, if there was any doubters out there, it's kind of, you know, the, the, the switching sides now because it is a great story. You've overcome your demons out of the ring. We all know about that. And as I say, you've overcome your, your losses in the ring to rebuild, rediscover yourself. And again, still only 25 years of age. So it's, a, it's an exciting story to get behind to. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, and I think what it does now, it covers the fact of, obviously loads of people have stories, but sometimes you think, oh, it's just coming out of rubbish. You know what I mean? It's just probably all made up. But it shows you, if you see the, the improvement, you see the freshness of me, if you just look at pictures of me at weigh-ins and stuff uh, from past fights, and then you look at me this way, not my body, just look at my face, that my skin even, you know, like from your stress to your skin being rough and stuff and your hair not even being cut because you're not too worried about what you look like and stuff. And you see me now, everything's fresh, everything's right, everything's getting done properly and it shows, it proves everyone all right, he won't lie. It, it, that is what happened. He sorted himself out and now he's back to where it needs to be. Fantastic. It's really good scene. It's really good to hear that you're in such a, a positive place, but inevitably we look at what's next boxing never really stands still and once you win one fight and you know you don't have anything to look forward to fans are always clamoring yeah. to hey, what's next and there's the fights with Andy Fowler which at one point that seemed inevitable but that's again a domestic scene where do you see yourself sitting at the minute Ted like you're number one at domestic scene but are you, you going to go back in at European level is it fringe world title contention what's what's the idea in your head um, obviously speaking to Tony and, and Charlie obviously be nice to probably try and push for an eliminator for a world title. You know what I mean? Because, like, this Sam Egan fight, Sam Egan, I think, was four or five in the IBF. Yeah. When I beat him, I took his eighth. I, I, I should have took his ranking, but I've become eighth. Yeah. This fight, JJ Metcalf has been fifth in the IBF. Now, hopefully, I'll push into the top five. If I don't take his fifth, hopefully I'll take fourth or third. And then I'm right there, you know what I mean? Um, like I said to you, I, I've earned my stripes. I've proved myself. At domestic level, I've, I've showed everyone what I can do. I've showed everyone I'll fight everyone. Do you know what I mean? This and the Fowler fight will happen at some point. Do you know what I mean? It'll like guaranteed to happen at some point. But whether it's next or whether um, we go separate ways at the moment and meet further down the line, do you know what I mean? It's going to happen. Everyone wants to see it. But I believe now I deserve a bit of luck and a bit and a, and a big opportunity. Yeah, that's it. You know, nobody's asking for a for a gimme, but when you've had the run that you've been on, like consistently fighting the best contenders domestically, the very best domestically, and then stepped up to European title level, like you're not asking for a gimme, but there's certainly got to be a, a reward almost, you know, like you say, something better than what you've been fighting for at the minute because you've you've achieved everything domestically. Yeah, cool. So what I'd say is just just look at every other fighter below me and obviously now I'm number two Leon Smith's obviously on a, already on a world level so he don't really get talked about domestically but from me downwards look at everyone else's resume and look at my resume other than Sam Egan who I've already fought there's no one who's fought nowhere near the opponents of or tough fights I have you know I mean like people need to prove themselves for me like I, every time I give someone opportunities it's always for them to take my rewards and me just making a risk, taking a risk. Now, I want to be a how to have a, a, a reward and not so much risk. Do you get what I mean? I want, I want the reward to be like a lot better than the risk. Do you get what I mean? So, look, 
for me, I'm a fighter. I, I, I fight anyone, whenever, wherever. Do you know what I mean? But it's now time where I'm in such a good stage and good position to let my manager and coach fully take over and just let them deal with it all. Do you know what I mean? As if it was me, I'd be calling a hundred names out. I want to fight him. 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 And I'll fight him this week and that one next week. But it ain't down to me. Do you know what I mean? I, I've done that. I rushed pick fights, the wrong fights at the wrong at wrong time. But for me, I believe still now, I could have probably had an easy British defence when I fought uh, Garcia. And I might not have the best performance, but I still won. Do you know what I mean? And then I never got over my demons because... I would have still won, still got my payday, still then have another fight after. And it have been a vicious circle until I got that defeat. But I'm glad I got it when I did. And I think it ain't really a bad defeat to have on your name against someone who's number two in the WBC. He's 31 or 32, I know. He's a top quality fighter, you know I mean? a world level fighter. And will hopefully more than likely get a world title shot soon. And hopefully, if he goes and wins it, I'll say, look, that's who I was beat by. Do you know what I mean? So. Um, no, nah, I just, I just, as I say, I just got to fully let Charlie and Tony take over, make decisions. Otherwise, I might as well manage and train myself. Absolutely. Is there, did, obviously, I know you yourself, as you say, you'd fight anybody, but has there been a discussion about, we've seen the improvements you've made in the two years since the loss to Garcia, but is there a desire there from your team, maybe from Eddie, to, to get the rematch? Because I know you'd fight him tomorrow, as you say. Yeah, it, you know what? It's like, it's one of them things you with guys here, there ain't a lot of reward for uh, for like the risk. Do you know what I mean? Like he's a tough fight, but promotion wise and stuff, mm-hmm. who really wants to see Ted Cheeseman versus Garcia? Do you know what I mean? No, no one, no one really knows who Garcia is except for actual boxing people. Like, w- would that sell on Sky to 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 the public? At, at, like, unless I'm either gonna fight a world title limit as the same takes the name or the likes of a, another big name in the domestic scene. It'd be worth more than that, like so. It's just it's a it's a tough fight for nothing, really. You got, I mean, obviously, look, the, the European title is a good title to win, but I'll probably be I'll be better off defending my British than trying to fight for that belt. You know what I mean? Because you're gonna have to, like, with his ranking and stuff, there's a lot of money that will have to be spent on him to get over and come do the defense. Do you know what I mean? So, out of the budget, you end up getting a rubbish percentage. Do you know what I mean? So. For what it is, it's a business as well as a sport, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. as much as you want to achieve your goals, it's like fighting for an IBF eliminator and then putting yourself in a position where you may be right on top of a world title shot. That's what you want, you know what I mean? That's what I come into sport to achieve. And, or obviously a big name, you know what I mean? A big American, a big, like uh, an international name that everyone knows and that everyone thinks, oh, bloody hell, that's a good fight. I mean, that, that's what you want. I think now as well, where the fight was on the zone, I've had a lot of messages from American people and stuff and got a good following out there and they, they enjoyed the fight. Yeah. And, and I think, as I say, there's going to be big opportunities come because everyone wants to see me fight again. Yeah, absolutely. You know, one name that I just came across when I was looking on BoxRec, as everyone does, and we look at your record and where you're ranked, and BoxRec is independent, so it's not as... as, as, as highly ranked as maybe the governing bodies when it terms yeah. of, of what matters. Uh, but yeah. right below you is Austin Trout, former world champion, and yeah. he obviously made his comeback. I guess that would be the kind of name that you're alluding to. You know, obviously, I'm not saying you yeah, call like- Trout, but he's got the name, he's got the pedigree, and it's the exposure stateside as well. Yeah, cool. So look, look at like the like the Conor Ben fighting, Samuel Vargas. They're massive names, you know what I mean? It sells to the public. I mean, Conor Ben could fight Chris Jenkins, but for what? Like, well, what is he going to get probably out of fighting that? Or, you know what I mean, a Chris Congo or a McKinson? The, it ain't, what sells to the public is someone who everyone knows, everyone thinks, oh, bloody hell, that's a tough fight. You know what I mean? Or he's fought this person, he's fought that person. You know what I mean? So it sells, you know what I mean? It, it, it's On paper, it looks really, really tough and really good. And the people are going to get behind it and want to see it. So that's what you need. You know what I mean? Like you say, names like that, they're, they're massive names and you beat them people. The doors open. You know, you mentioned there, Conor Ben, and you're a stable mate in, in Joe Cardina picking up wins. You picked up the win. Is it going to be a hat trick come April 10th when Conor Ben goes and fights Samuel Vargas? Is he going there and get the job done? Yeah, 100%. I think Conor Ben knock, knocks out um, Samuel Vargas in the middle rounds. And obviously, look, it ain't going to be an easy night. Samuel Vargas is a tough man. But Conor can bang. And 
I think for this year, if you look at our gym, like everyone's on a really, really good level. Our stable, like we got Joe Corina, he's nigh on there for like an eliminator for a world title. Me, I, I'm, I'm in a great position now. Conor Ben, once he beats Vargas, he's going to be in a great position high up with the WBA. Then you got Felix Cash fighting for the British title. You know what I mean? And, and he's already come. Martin Ward fighting in a final eliminator. John Ryder fighting in the interim. You know what I mean? All of these fights, Craig Richards fighting Bivol. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's like, if you listen, listen to the fights coming out of the camp, everyone's in there. Everyone's there. So you can imagine how the gym is at the moment. It's flying. You know what I mean? It's flying in the gym. Yeah, that's something I was going to touch on there. When you've all got big fights and 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 big opportunities coming, and you know you're all kind of pushing each other and balancing off each other, it must be a fantastic environment to be a part of. And you're all supporting. Yeah. Each other. yeah, it's great. Like on our runs, we're all trying to beat each other. On the circuits, we're trying to beat each other. It's like when we're fighting, obviously everyone wants to impress. But plus, we've all got we're, we're in our group chats and WhatsApp and stuff, and everyone supporting each other and everyone's behind each other and it's a great gym, you know what I mean? Like, success breeds success and it's just working right now. We've had a great start to the year so far with me and Joe and Connor's next to take up and I, and I believe it, it'll do a number on some of our best. Exciting times. So what's the, the immediate plans, Ted? What's your downtime including? Obviously, you're going to take a bit of rest before getting back to the gym. What kind of things do you like to do to relax? Yeah, do you know what? Usually, I had Barbados booked for two weeks but obviously it got cancelled because of um, COVID but Somehow I'm gonna try and get away somehow or or get a staycation, you know what I mean? But I think but wait really till after the twelfth when everything opens up was uh, I was speaking with a missus in the last couple of days and like he's talking about going places, but then I was like, listen, all we're gonna do is go somewhere, stay there, and then we're gonna to have to get takeaways and stuff. So it's pointless really and we can do the exact same thing at home. But once the twelfth comes, um hopefully a bit everything start opening and that. And then you'll be able to enjoy somewhere if you go up the country somewhere in Cornwall or Devon or uh, up north or whatever. You can at least go out and eat outside or whatever and not just sit in your hotel room. So I'll tell you what, Ted, losing a, a two-week Barbados trip, that's a, that's a bigger L than the Sergio Garcia fight. Yeah, no, I know. I was gutted. But listen, hopefully there's a lot more worse things going on in the world right now. So Absolutely. just got to hope for the best and hopefully this COVID all sorts itself out very soon. Yeah, absolutely. Ted, well, it's been a, a pleasure to chat to you today. I'd just like to thank you for your time. Thanks for joining us on the interview and uh, I wish you the very best moving forward when your future fight dates arise. I'm sure we'll be, uh, be in touch again and we'll have a catch up in the future. But for now, the very best of luck moving forward. Yeah, thanks a lot. Cheers for the interview. Cheers, Luke. Sweet, mate.